partake in this. Okay? So these four people that are standing up here will not have to do this again. I pick the next four people. And, and then the next four people. For every single... But there's two main drapes that I ask you guys to remember more than anything else. That's split drapes. And then the other one is going to be an extremity drape. Okay? So tonight, being shoulder... Shoulder and hips, they use the split drapes or U drapes. Okay? When it comes to elbows um, and knees or feet and wrists, we use extremity drapes. Okay? So those are your main drapes that you're going to have to know. You're going to have to know others too, but those are what I'm really focusing in on. Position of the patient is really, really important too. So a beach chair position would be someone in exactly that position, about a 45 degree angle. And then the knees slightly flexed, you can relax. And so they would have like a table or some type of apparatus that would hold the patient in this position. Got it? This would be just straight supine position. Then we have the lateral position, which is them up on their side. And then we also do the prone position, which is them on their back or on their stomach. Okay? Most prone positions are going to be uh, spine cases or an Achilles tendon. Maybe some nerve. Maybe if they had to do a popliteal nerve or something like that, um, they may require that the patient go prone. Sometimes they do like a semi-quasi-lateral too. Uh, the doctors can be pretty creative. But the point of what I'm trying, this whole point of this is there's a lot more that goes on than just this. Or even better. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot more that goes on. Um, it starts when I first get into the operating room. The very first thing that I do, uh, I'm in total scrubs. I have a mask on. I have a hood on. Or I mean a hat. And, and uh, I don't wear booties, but you should. Okay. Uh, but I'll grab my gloves. I come over to the back table. I open them up. I help open up anything that the scrub tech is opening. Maybe they have, you know, they could be opening up light handles, Esmar, other drapes. They will have a stack of it. I'll help open all that stuff up for the scrub tech. They want your help. If you just come in and put your gloves up, that's something the doctors would do. They don't want another doctor. They want help. You are help. You're cheap. Okay? So get your ass in there and help out. Don't just sit around. It's the number one complaint that I hear about some of the techs that I work with is they don't do shit. Oh, I, I have no idea what they say about me. But I can tell you that I hear a lot of complaints. You know, oh, God, Chris, well, how can you train your techs down there to come and help like you help? You know? Well, let me tell you this. We don't get breaks in the operating room. Got it? We don't get lunches in the operating room. You have to find your break. You have to find your lunch. So I understand some techs. As soon as the case is over, they dart out, they go get something to eat, something to drink, maybe pee. Okay? So there's argument there. I understand it. But the number one complaint that I hear is we don't help out. And then, uh, and that's also in the surgery centers on the outside, too. I hear the exact same thing. So, most shoulder, sur shoulder surgeries are going to be uh, in a beach chair or a lateral position. Um, we're going to set her up in a lateral position as if we were going to do a shoulder scope. A shoulder scope can be done in a beach chair or a lateral. Okay? Um, rotator cuff repairs, total shoulders, hemiarthroplasties, those are all done, ORIFs, are pretty much done in a beach chair position. The only position that is strictly for a lateral is pretty much going to be just uh, uh, an arthroscopy. But we can fix rotator cuffs through arthroscopy. We can do glenoid, uh, I mean labral repairs through, our, through arthroscopy. So, uh, but pretty much lateral is going to be straight, straight arthroscopy. So a patient is laying on the table or not laying on the table. I help get the patient after I help open up the room. I help get the patient over to the operating room table. Patient's not allowed to have their feet crossed. While I'm doing all this, I somehow manage to get things I'm going to need for the case. Um, she's going to need an axillary roll for the axilla. Okay. She's going to need some other types of padding. You know those egg crate type padding that you see? Um, that's what this is for now. So I'm missing my egg crate padding. But I'm going to use this as egg crate. 
So, as the patient is going to sleep, anesthesia is talking to them, slipping them some margaritas in the, in, in, in the IV, um, and you're just sitting there not really doing much? Bullshit. You're helping anesthesia. Okay? They might need some cracoid pressure. They might need some, uh, some other type of help. Even as simple as me doing this, relax, helps them. Let me tell you why. Because when they go to put the tube, relax, open your mouth. When they put the tube down the throat, they are looking straight down the epiglottis. Okay? And when all the, they don't, they're not looking at where that tube is going. They grab the tube and they got that mouth open and they're trying to feed it down there. If I just do this, it allows them to slide the tube in just a little bit. Can you do that on this side? I couldn't see what you did. You gotta relax. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 you don't have to do it, but I mean, that just, just the littlest thing can help out. Is the IV running? Is the pulse oximeter? The pulse ox measures the oxygen in the blood. Is that hooked up? Is that all the machines working? They're going to ask you, hey, can you check the pulse ox? And you're going to look for their fingertip. Maybe it's on their toe. You know? Is the I oh, can you check the IV? Where is the IV? Is it in the wrist or is it in the ancubital space? You know? So things that they might want you to be able to pick up on to make sure that things are, are moving right along. Uh, but that's what I do. I sit there and I help out. The, uh, the, the nurse or the circulating nurse, she's always on the other side, okay, helping out. As soon as the patient goes to sleep, it's my, it's my gig. You're asleep. Patient's asleep. I have to rotate the patient up on the lateral side. I will typically grab and pull them up onto one side. Great for your back, let me tell you. If they are in a lateral position, you want the knees slightly flexed. You want the hips straight up and down. I will need help. Are you the doctor or the scrub tech? Um, the ortho oh, you're the ortho tech. You're going to be on that side. Okay. You're going to slide the axillary roll slightly below the axilla. Because you don't want pressure up in the armpit, you want it below the armpit. No, 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 not that one. This one, the one she's laying on. <laughs> See, it goes right below the axilla, not in the axilla. Got it? This arm will go right here. What else might need padding? Between the knees. Between the knees would need some padding. Normally, we stick a pillow between the knees. But some of the A-crate, how about the perineal nerve? It's always the down leg or the down part of the body that's going to have a problem. How about the heel? Chris, do they put those compressions? Um, they, they do. Not, every they, not everyone, but a lot of them. Okay. Uh, you could put some on the hip. I typically do not, um, but you can. I have seen people do that. I definitely hit the perineal nerve and the heels. And if, you, if, if both legs are on the ground, if it's a supine, you have to put both heels, both, both knees. So we'll get to that. Um, again, you can put a pillow between the legs. The arm's going to go in a positioner because you can't sterilize it at her side. You got it? So the scrub nurse, which is? Oh. No, I'm not the nurse. I'm the scrub. You're the scrub oh. tech. You're the doctor. We don't have a scrub nurse, do we? We need a scrub nurse. Anybody want to be scrub nurse? Come on back here. Come here, big boy. Stop filming. Okay. Shit, I have your No, but he's not scrubbing. Oh, okay. He facilitates uh, between sterile environment and unsterile environment. So he's watching, making sure all this shit is happening. So uh, you're not on quite yet, but you will be. So once I got the patient up, I will tape the patient down, too. I actually take tape and tape right over the ASIS to hold the patient from going forward or backwards. They also have, this patient will probably be on some type of positioner or bean bag, which is exactly that. It's a bean bag that they're laying on. Once I got them up in the right position, I fold the bean bag up. I pack it all up, all the beans up against her, and they suck all the air out of the bean bag. And then it can totally molds to her. Wow, and it cool. keeps her in a lateral position. That's cool. That'd be a bean bag. We'll, hopefully we'll get to see that soon. <clears throat> So right now we're assuming I've padded, I've got the axillary roll in, I got the bean bag up, all the air is sucked out, I got tape over the ASIS, okay, so she's not going anywhere. 
Now, the nurse is going to scrub tech, needs to make sure she's already get, gowned and gloved, so you're going to rinse your hands. You're going to gown and glove yourself. Mm -hmm. Is there a towel over here? Um, yeah. We'll get you one. one by the Being the nurse on this case, because I'm not going to get her. Well, maybe we can. Typically, we would have this. Um, she wouldn't have a top on, so we could get to the shoulder itself. But as of right now, you're going to hold the arm up because it would be in a positioner. Maybe a finger traps connected to an IV post that holding the arm up like this, while he paints it with betadine and gets it all cleaned and ready to go. But we don't have that. So he has to facilitate, you're going to go put some gloves on, and you're going to put your gloves on sterilely. You know how to do that? Yes, sir. Is she doing that right? Yeah. Oh, nurse, she's tied up. I said, no, I have more respect for my mom. Have you guys been watching the videos? The By the way, on Tuesday, after I give the quiz, your practical exam for that quiz is going to be to put these gloves on sterilely as if you were in the clinic doing it. Meaning you're not scrubbing your hands, you're just going to put them on sterilely. There was a video that went out at the, that um, I asked Meg to uh, share with you guys, and I know she did. There's your gloves. On the pizza box. <laughs> on the pizza box. So how do you open up? How do you do that sterilely? Can you show them? Let's do it right here. Let's see if he does this right. Let's go ahead. You're checking me out. Mind your what? I don't even know. Don't touch the basil. Don't touch the glove on oh, the inside. Yeah, don't touch the glove and then you open it this way. Yep. Make sure you fold it to where it stays open. Yeah. You can touch the inside. There you yeah. go. Which one are you going to touch first? Okay. Nope. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. So what he cannot do is touch the... Uh, inside the cup. He can't touch anything. He can just touch this side of the cup. Let me show you a quick and easy way of doing this. So here, put your hands in. See, I'm just touching the outside of the cup. Or actually, it's the inside of the cup. Put my hand in. Yep. Just like this. And then I can peel it over. By the inside. By the inside. Can't touch from here out or on the inside. Now, the next part that he has, since if he did that one right, I wasn't watching, how would he put that one on? Well, this is actually sterile. Can I just do it usually? That, because you want to put it on the inside. Right. No, no. Put your hand, put those, this is sterile. This so is sterile. So you can touch, outside. put it on the inside here. Oh, okay. There you go. And then, then the do that. Okay. Make sense? Very good. Well. That's how you would do it in a clinic for some sterile technique. Maybe they're doing an injection. This is how they do it. Maybe they want you to put a sterile uh, dressing on. Got it? So that, that, that's how you would do a sterile dressing. Sure. This is Dura Prep. 